In this module, we are going to discuss on consumers and the corporate citizenship and where we are going to discuss the consumer sovereignty and the politics of purchasing. So, when we are talking of the consumer sovereignty, we are um, talking of the situations which under perfect competitions, the consumers are the people who are driving the market and it has three elements. Uh, so, which decides actually whether the consumers are um, truly um, the person who are deciding on the or the driving the market is not is based on three things which we call the consumer capability, consumers information and consumers choice. Means it is the degree when you are talking of consumers capability it is the degree of freedom from limitations in rational decision making, the limitations which are created by the vulnerability of the individuals or from the coercion uh, exercise of coercion by the organizations. So, this talks of consumers capability or freedom for decision making. When you are talking of information, it is the consumers access to information, the sources of information and the mm. level of uh, um, information symmetry is there between the firm and the um, consumers, the producers and the um, sellers and the buyers. So, what type of symmetry is there and when you are talking of choice, it is the like um, the extent of opportunity um, available to the consumers to switch from one seller to the other seller. So, if it is a only one player in the market, this choice is limited, but there are n number of players who are giving equal types of uh, products and services or competitive products and services. So, they, they, it gives a choice to the um, consumer to switch from one products and services to other products and services. And all these three together will determine the consumer's uh, sovereignty and whether the customer is the king or not. So, this will go through a consumer sovereignty test. So, which talks of like the consumer's capability um, from for decision making and which talks of freedom from limitations in rational decision making and it talks of vulnerability factors like age, education and health which could be the sample criteria for establishing adequacy like who is taking the decision sort of. Like when you are talking of information whether the availability of and the quality of the relevant data is there. So, the quantity, comparability and complexity of the information, degree or bias in the deception or deception in the communication or not. So, these will determine again the information quality and availability and choice that is the opportunity for switching the number of competitors present and the level of competition and what is the switching cost of switching from one organization to other organization will determine the like consumer sovereignty for exercising their own choices. So, when we are exercising the concept of citizenship in the uh, corporate citizenship and the um, consumer behavior and uh, we are trying to see what is the political role that may be played. We can see we will visit the concept of ethical consumptions which, um, which has a political um, 
role to play in deciding, in enforcing the organizations to um, you produce goods or services as desirable by the um, organization. So, this may help in exercising um, the sovereignty power and uh, the corporate uh, and, and it talks of the politics of uh, purchasing. So, um, this shows how like um, the whole discussion of con like when you are talking of uh, expectations of the consumers and the improved uh, protections of consumer rights, um, how it has generally moved from traditional concept of caveat emptor to buyer beware. So, uh, we find like it is more now expected in terms like where the, um, in terms of consumer protection and all, it is uh, expected like the firms take care of the um, responsibility of um, the protecting the needs of the consumers and they respecting it, their rights and stretch out their activities to find out like whether they are addressing these needs of the mm, consumers and also the other stakeholders connected to the business. So, when we are talking of this um, mm, ethics of like um, mm, consumer like ethics of marketing then. So, when you are talking of these exercising of consumers uh, right and uh, responsibility of the consumers and also the corresponding responsibilities of the producers and the sellers, then, then what we are talking of is moving again to the domain of when you are talking of ethics of marketing is then what is that which is going to prevail. So, why will the firms be motivated enough to follow this uh, caveat uh, vendor type of concept, where they have to enter into a, take uh, due care of the processes and think of the social cost uh, that may be connected with the unknown, even if after they have taken care of the due uh, care, the unforeseen type of damages that uh, that could be linked with it. And why the people uh, should be organization should be mm, related to it. So, this can be why they should be motivated for it. So, this can be triggered by the concept of when you are talking of the consumer sovereignty, if you are taking the consumer as a, our mood by the concept of ethical consumption, where the it is the conscious and deliberate decision of the consumers to make certain consumption choices due to personal moral beliefs and values. So, there are n number of alternatives present and it is the consumer who is deliberately exercising it, taking a conscious and deliberate decision to exercise certain choice based on the consumer sovereignty test that we have already done to due to some personal moral beliefs and values. So, that talks of ethical consumption, like I will be going for the products, which may be are focusing towards some worthy cause, which may be has taken care of uh, the due care processes, may be have answered to us taking care of the social cost and try to minimize the harm uh, to the um, consumers and to the other stakeholders at large or maybe to a very 
the uh, profits of it are going for a specific cause for the development uh, of the uh, some of the social causes. So, these could be guiding forces which are like in line with the personal values of the moral beliefs and values of the consumers which may promote them to motivate them to purchase certain things. So, recent market survey on consumer attitude shows like 70 percent of global consumers said their purchase decision could be influenced by a product supporting a worthy cause. So, again, so, but it means what a caution over here is like the what they have mentioned in the survey uh, that may not always correspond to their actual view. I may tell like I will support a uh, organization uh, and we will be buying from certain organization which is working to a greater social cause and for a worthy cause and have taken care of all the due processes and all things have internalized the social cost also. But when it comes to actual buying, I may exercise a different option. So, I, I may give a socially desirable answer when asked about uh, ethical consumption, but really do I go for it or not is a test when you get like when you do your actual behavior and it, it is shown like it may or may not correspond to the actual behavior. So, consumers activism around increase today, consumers are becoming more and more expressive in stating what they actually want from the product and how they want the product to function and how it want to be manufactured and all. So, these and if it is not produced as per these specifications and not. So, the it may lead to like you you are getting some sort of boycott or other type of things. So, with these activism mm, having increased, so it has a it provides you know like some sort of positive mm, impetus to the organizations to follow the uh, due care processes and take care of the uh, social cost. Downside of this ethical consumption will be like motives for the corporation. Uh, the downside could be the motives will only for this economic support because you through these processes you know like there is a target group of your people who will be promoting for your causes and maybe it is it becomes um, an effort on your part to produce goods and services for that only target group of people. And so, the motives of the corporation will be primarily economic in nature not a moral sort of obligation uh, to produce or follow the duties because you feel like it is a part of your moral obligation to do it. So, the guiding force may be not moral obligation, but your economic considerations because you know these are the group of people who are going to buy your things and you target your products and services and your marketing strategies towards them only. So, again because it is ethical consumptions is um, um, then, then based on the um, personal moral beliefs, values and choices, then and the peop, um, organizations are guided by the economic motive and not by the moral obligation part of it. So, one day it may so happen these group of people who were supporting or exercising their ethical con, uh, consumption rights or supporting this cause. So, one day it may so happen 
that they may decide to no longer want to want to or afford to pay extra for these ethical accessories and that uh, the company also may lose its motivation to follow the processes uh, for due care or like taking care of the social cost because it has lost interest of the people for whom it was targeted to. So, and if again purchases are power, then these ethical consumptions because it becomes very high priced things because the organizations will tell like we have internalized the social cost, we have also taken care of the due processes and so um, due care things in our processes. So, that is why the price um, is high. So, in that case the power to purchase lies with the hand of the rich people and the poor do not give an access to it. So, this when you are talking of ethical consumption, so in some cases this because it depends on the conscious and deliberate decision to make certain consumption choices based on personal beliefs and you know, values, though it may have a uh, very positive impact on the organization in motivating it to function in certain way. But if the organization does not take it as a part of their moral responsibility to take care of the needs and the expectations of the different stakeholders and take it as a part of the duty to take care of the social cost which they have the on the harm which a large group of people are uh, sharing though they may not be accessing your products or services and if it takes a part of its moral obligation also and maybe a part of its challenge also to how to balance for these issues without increasing maybe the price of the uh, uh, products or services and making the services accept like accessible to all and get giving this quality accessible to all uh, to all instead of just depending on people who may be promoting ethical consumptions for a time and then if they do not feel like they are withdrawing their support from it and then there is a shift in the organization's intention to follow this route of producing uh, goods and services in an ethical way uh, or uh, following the uh, due care perspective or the taking care of the social cost, then it becomes a problem. Moving forward, we will discuss in the next module about the sustainable consumption.